Welcome back, guys. Uh, here recently, I've had a few uh, questions about my live scope pole and uh, where I got it from and, how, and all that. Well, I didn't get it from anywhere. I, I built it myself. It's one of those do-it-yourself uh, motorized live scope poles. And today, this video, we're just going to go over here and I'm going to show you what I got and how I came up with it. So let's head on over to the boat and get started. Okay, so let's go over the uh, the pole itself first. Um, <clears throat> it's not too complicated. Um, this is probably like the second or third edition I've come out with. And I pretty much got it like I want it now. Um, it consists of an a inch and an eighth thin wall aluminum tube uh, is, is the main pole. Okay, and you can see I have the uh, transducer mount already on here clamped on. Um, I switched over to a zero degree. I don't know if you guys realize it or not, but the, the, the mount, uh, the clamp part that comes with the forward-facing sonar transducer is at an angle um, for reasons I'm not going to get into here. But anyway, this is a zero degree angle. You can buy those. Um, several different places. I'll put a link to some down in the description. But uh, it's clamped on and ready to go. Like I said, an inch and an eighth OD thin wall aluminum tube. I got uh, I got this slot cut inside of it and I have a, a pawl sticking out. It's got some spring steel bent in there. And you know, this is pretty common on a lot of things. Uh, you'll see, you'll see why that's there when I get everything put together. That's in there, and I drilled a couple holes in here for the handle. The handle I 3D printed. It's nothing, nothing fancy about it. Just something I can grab and pull up on it when I'm ready to to pull it in. And it also, you know, helps me know what direction the transducer's pointed in by looking at the handle. This is the uh, steering collar that goes on there. Um, you know, it, it mates up with with the uh, the motor, and this is this acts as a actual like a dog on this shaft. It 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 turns it. So anyway, uh, and I also have a piece of three quarter inch uh, PVC that goes down on the inside. This is the way I came up to keep. I noticed when I when I first started using this thing. It works its way up as you use it, and that's not good. You out on the water, and that thing gets hung, gets pushed up in here, and then it, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So you got to have some way to keep this thing from working its way up inside this tubing. So uh, you can't put any set screws or anything in here because this slides in and out of your steering motor, so nothing can really be in the way. So I have to... Uh, this is what I came up with. It's just a piece of three quarter inch plywood that's capped on the end. Not a plywood. Ha! <laughs> piece of three quarter inch PVC. And it goes down and it sits right on top of this, this thing here. Okay, then the next piece that you're gonna have to put on is this, this steering collar. Okay. Just push it up on there somewhere for now. Then the handle that I 3D printed goes on top of that, like so. And then you have a, a bolt that goes in and comes out the other side with a nut on it. And that bolt keeps that piece of PVC from coming out and, and holds everything in place. So, so anyway, that's how it goes. And now, since I was such a genius and went ahead and put it together like this, I have to take it apart now so I can get it back in the motor. This uh, steering box came off of an old uh, Minn Kota power drive 
uh, trolling motor that I had a long time ago, one of the first five pilot trolling motors I had. <clears throat> anyway, I'll put a link. If you want to just buy this, this piece is only like, I don't know, it's around a hundred bucks. Um, but it works real good, man. It's, it's, it's solid. It's strong. This thing's got a, yeah, I've opened it up and looked at it. It's really a, it's not a very big DC motor in here, but, uh, there's a lot of gears in here. I had no idea, but it's strong, man. You're not going to stop this thing from turning. Um, anyway, what I got here is some homemade stuff. Uh, this, this motor is actually real easy to take off. You just pull a couple pins out and there it is. This is what steers the whole thing. Um, the, the, uh, well, let me get this out of the way. This is a mount, a magnetic mount from uh, Fishing Specialties. Um, I had it, I, when I first started using LiveScope, I had a pole, you know, with a handle on it. And this is what I used and it works real good for that, man. It, it's clean. Um, when you're done with it, you just pop these magnetic switches and the whole thing comes out and you can throw it in a locker or something. And all you're really left with is, is this metal plate that's mounted to the boat. But uh, if you can see what I did with it, okay. <clears throat> I just took a few, couple uh, plates of aluminum, drilled them up, and screwed them into the side. This is made out of some kind of... Um, high density plastic stuff man i don't know what you what you call it but it's, it's pretty strong stuff and it'll hold a screw real good three screws in here two holes to match the holes in the steering box uh one on each side that's pretty much it uh whenever you're ready to go you just mm, drop her on there turn the mag switches on and it's solid it's not going anywhere uh, so then, like I said, you get the steering box. It goes on here. Um, yeah, I have two, two pins. One of them, well, let me get this other one. I got another push pin too. I can't find it right now. But, so I'll just use the original pin that came in here. This, this pin stays in all the time, okay? The other one goes in and out, depending on whether you want to stow it or not. So with the other pin out, this thing will hinge back like this. So this is how you, uh, when you get ready to go home or trailer or boat or whatever, you just pull it up like this. The pole's already retracted as far as it'll go. The transducer sitting right here. Um, the, the pole actually comes in right up under the trolling motor shaft. So it sits there and rides just fine. Hadn't had any problem with it. Uh, when you're out on the water, and this thing, when you first deploy it and put it down, you put this other pin in. Uh, you know, yeah, you're hanging over the edge of the boat. It's a little precarious, but once you get it set up, man, you don't mess with it anymore. It's pretty easy. Uh, that pin keeps it from coming up. So <clears throat> one thing you'll find that it, if this pin's not in, and, and you can fish without that pin in, uh, but if you make real hard turns to the left and to the right, it, it'll actually it'll actually do this number here because of the water. Um, so if you leave this in, uh, it locks it in place and it keeps that from happening. Plus, as you're going down a lake, like I said, you don't have to fold this thing in the boat going down a lake. You, you just pick that pole all the way up. And we'll, we'll show you that next. We'll go ahead and put the pole Here in. we are with the pole. And, and uh, it goes in just like this. There goes the little retractable pole that you got there, and it, it'll just sit just like that. Um, you know. So now we'll go ahead and get the steering collar on here. I just put it on and just get it out of the way for now. All right. Next thing gonna go on is is a handle. It's just like we did 
just like we did uh, earlier. Just pull the collar all the way up to the handle. Okay. like that okay that's how it goes I mean uh, and like I said when you get done when you're ready to move you just grab this handle and pick up on it and set it back down just like that transducer sits right here well above the water uh, you are ready to roll this thing's plenty strong enough to go down the lake so you don't have to roll it back and stow it the only time you do that is when you get ready to leave for a day so anyway, you roll up on your spot, you're ready to deploy it, you just bend over a little bit, push that in, it drops right back down and locks into place, just like that. So now, I'll go ahead and get the transducer hooked up, and we'll come back, and we'll go over the electronic part of it. Okay, so the electrical part, what makes this all work, it's really pretty simple, it's not, it's, it's, it's not much to it really um the beauty of this is it's a dc motor 12 volts um all you have to do to make it change direction is change the polarity and so that makes it that makes it real simple when it comes to to coming up with the controls like i said i use a foot control and here it is it's all this is all uh temporary uh i I have been through so many revisions with this thing to get it like I want it that it really looks like a piece of junk, but I'm going to come up with something better, uh, something a little more substantial, something a little more permanent. But when I first started trying to figure out what I wanted to do with this, I didn't even, I didn't even use this, this motor. I designed a pole inside of another pole and I was using a, uh, a stepper motor with an Arduino, controlled by an Arduino that I had to program. Um, man, I've tried all kinds of stuff. Uh, so that's why I got holes in it here and there. It's just, you know, that's the beauty of doing this stuff yourself, man, is you can just keep trying different things until you perfect it and get it like you want it. And then you can go back and, and do something something a little more permanent with it. But anyway, uh, yeah, these boxes are, are, are 3D printed and uh, got snap lids on them. So all you gotta do really is just, just uh, pop the lids off uh, to get to, to the insides of them. And uh, so, let me get the camera down and come over here and get some close-ups of this and we'll talk about it some more. Okay, so here we are. Uh, hope you can see that. So I'm behind the camera. Yeah, you should be able to see that. All right, uh, first of all, we got, we got 12 volts. This is coming off my 12 volt bus, uh, which is underneath my trolling motor pedal and all that other stuff. Um, 12 volts this is this is the power coming into the box you can see where it, you can see where it comes in right here 12 volts goes into this circuit board now this is something that you can buy dude i tell you what these chinese or something else you can get stuff like this cheap dirt cheap i'll leave a link to it right off amazon the exact same thing man this thing works great so what you do basically is you got uh you got 12 volts coming into this thing all right, and what it does is uh, your buttons over here on, on, your, on your foot control, it decides what polarity, and it just comes in here and it reads the signal coming from, from the push buttons, which all you're doing is completing a ground. So you take a ground off, you just pull off a ground and go to your switches, and when you make a switch left or right, it sends ground to, to the circuit board, and it can tell you want to go right or you want to go left. And what it does is it activates a relay. Here's two relays in here. Um, when it closes one relay, it sends 
12 volts out of this, this cord to your motor. Uh, say positive, negative. And when you hit the other button, it closes the other relay and it sends out negative, positive. So you get a left and you get a right. Pretty simple, man. I mean, it's, yeah, you, you listen to the relay click a little bit, but you don't even notice it when you're fishing. Um, and then it's got a real stat uh, up here at the top. And what that does is control the speed. You want that thing to turn left and right real fast, you just turn that thing up. You want it to sweep real slow, you just turn it down. Um, I usually run it about halfway, it's just right for me, but you know, on some days I want it to react a little faster. So I just turn it up a little bit. And you can also turn it off by that. Um, so you can cut power to the motor. So anyway, we'll get it put back together. You can see the switches how I got them wired up here. Like I say, you got a negative, you got a ground, or the negative will coming in to both switches. And when you close the switch, you send ground, which is your signal, to, to the circuit board. And the circuit board knows whether you're pushing the left switch or the right switch. And it activates the, the, the proper relay. So anyway, I'll get this all put back together and we'll hook it up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here we are back, got everything put back together. I got um, power hooked up. I should have power to my uh, electrical box here, left and right. And what we'll do, we'll go ahead and deploy it. So, you know, when you get to the lake, you get, get ready to rock and roll for the first time. All you do is grab it, grab it up here and push it, push it through. Boom, just like that. Well, this won't be in there. Sorry about that. Down just like this and slip your pin back in and you're ready to go. Like I say, you get ready to leave, you just pull straight up on this till that clicks into place and you're ready to roll. You're ready to roll down, down the lake. Um, and when you get where you want to go and use it again, you just push this in, drops right back down in the water, falls into place where it's supposed to be. And uh, it's ready to go. So then, I, then you got your uh, your box over here, and you can turn it left or right. Uh, here we go. We're making a right hand turn, left, right, left, right, and you can use your foot, hands free. My preferred way of fishing. Uh, you can change the speed. This is that's that's wide open, and then you can get you can get it turned down to where it moves really slow. Now I don't have I do not I do not have any safety built in here to keep me from spinning this thing a thousand degrees one way or the other. So you know. It can it can wrap itself to death, so you have to pay attention to that. Uh, I've never had any problem with that though. Well, anyway, that's it, guys. Man, it's it's I love this thing, man. This is this is what I'm gonna go with. Uh, I like being able to use my feet. Uh, I'd like to be what I really like to do is to be somebody to come out with a standalone pole uh, that works like that deal that, that uh, I guess it's Hummingbird that's got it, that uh, can, can stay pointed at a waypoint or pointed at a brush pile no matter what. Dude, that would be, that would be awesome if they would come out. But you gotta buy their stuff and, you, and it's ungodly expensive. Why anybody would wanna spend that? Yeah, I ain't getting into that argument. But anyway, this works great, man. It teaches you boat control. You really, I mean, you're working the whole time you're working this thing left and right, you're working that trolling motor. Um, even on spot lock, uh, it'll hold that boat in one position pretty good. But that spot lock doesn't keep the front of your boat from swinging left and right to compensate for all that. So you have to be, you have to be on this thing. You have to be able to turn it a good bit. And that's why I can't stand using a hand control. Some guys do it and they're real successful at it. That's cool, man. I like this setup, man. I love it. So anyway, 
leave some comments down in the comment section and let me know what you think about this. I'll post links to all the stuff I use, all the pieces and parts. There's really not that many. Most of the stuff you end up having to make yourself, you know, if you're into 3D printing or whatever. You don't even have to do this, man. You can just cobble together some some stuff or whatever. It, it's all good. So anyway, appreciate, appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.